number one thing you should consider here is that you are building a team. You're building a family team and there's a family dynamic to the team. Set expectations or boundaries, your rules, your family standards, whatever you want to call them from the beginning mm -hmm. and do not venture away from those things that you set. Take day by day and don't be too hard on yourself. Make sure your highs aren't too high and your lows aren't too low. Parenting someone that you did not directly birth, it's going to be emotional for you, but it's also going to take some wisdom and some skill. If you did not teach them, assume that they do not know. All right, hey guys, back in our, in our bedroom for video number two. If you haven't watched Video number one talks about, you know, some of the processes and stuff that we went through um, and things that you need to consider from a organizational process. Uh, that previous video, we talked about, you know, the paperwork side, just understanding how the process works for adoption. We talked about that, that in this video, we are going to talk about um, more of what the family dynamic you should expect or some things <clears throat> that you should consider as you're bringing another person into your home or another group of people into your home. Uh, your family will simply never be the same. <laughs> so, you know, you need to prepare for some parts of this uh, in a unique way. And we're going to go through potentially nine or 10 things, nine or 10 things that, you know, we think is important for you guys to understand if you're actually taking on adoption. Let's start with this and I'll start this out, uh, baby. By the way, my wife's joining me on this one. Um, we're in our bedroom, not in our studio or in my office like we normally are when, when we're filming videos on mortgage. Uh, because this is a more intimate conversation here um, about the family dynamic and everything. Number one thing you should consider here is that you are building a team. Um, you know, you're building a family team and there's a family dynamic to the team. In 1965, uh, Dr. Tucker came up with this, these steps for how an organization kind of puts, uh, comes together. Uh, there's uh, forming, storming, norming, performing, and adjoining how a organization comes together mm -hmm. or team members in a organization work together. And uh, there is something called, um, what's it called? Trauma-informed parenting. Mm -hmm. Trauma-informed parenting is similar to that. As you go through this process of somebody coming into your home, there are certain check marks that the child hits um, as they work through you know, becoming a part of this family. And you have to be on watch for this and expect it to happen. You want to talk through, you know, some of that process and how that works as the child comes in, honey. Okay. So, yeah, as he mentioned, just like forming, storming, norming, performing, adjoining. When it comes to trauma-informed parenting, um, so when, you, when the child comes in the first month, that's going to be your most difficult month. Just because it's new for everybody, it's awkward. You know, you're all excited. You're thinking things are going to be so peachy key. But no, it's not. So it's a process. Um, so forming is your month one, typically. And then in month two, we have what's called storming. But when it comes to trauma-informed parenting, storming is actually a good thing. Whereas in business, you know, it's what the word says, storming. In parenting, that means the child is getting comfortable. So for others, it may seem bad because now you're seeing like who they really are. So you'll see them yell a lot more. You may see them even play around and, you know, just a lot more personality comes out, which is a good thing. So that's the storming phase. And then in stage, the month three is when it's like a normal. They've accepted it most times, still going through some things, of course, but this is home now. They trust us. So you have more of a normal type situation. And typically four, five, six before we, you know, before the adoption process, like we mentioned in the previous video, it's a six month process. So around month four, you may see a bit of a regression, okay? But then it comes back again to a normal. And normally by the end of the six months, you know, everything's good. It's like a real, it's like a family. We've all kind of adapted to the situation. And this is not like a check mark thing. This isn't no. like, uh, <clears throat> you know, hey, it's day 28. We're transitioning into this new phase. It's not like that. Um, but you will go through um, these phases um, and in our personal situation, I think, you know, the forming part happened really quickly. Um, and then we got into the storming. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you got to see a little more attitude, a little more, um, you know, um, and, and my kids, my our, our natural kids have been pretty good about this process. It could be because our daughter's, uh, you know, natural family uh, is a lot like, you know, um, our family in the sense of, you know, uh, she has two younger brothers, um, our 
And one older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one older, kind of similar setup as it is here. So she felt really, it felt really natural to her. And then, you know, they're one of her and one of my, uh, our, our, one of our middle sons is very close in age. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there was a, there was a faster transition mm -hmm. there into the storming part where we got to see her, her actual personality a lot faster. Mm -hmm. I think everybody at this point, you know, we're kind of in the norming, you know, getting into the norming situation. Yeah. Um, and, and starting to accept it. So just know that you're going to go through this process and you bring somebody else into your, um, into your home. Number two is your children need to be prepared. If you have natural children, your children really need to be prepared for this process. Can you talk about some of the conversations that we have? First of all, our children were involved in the selection of a child. Um, <laughs> somewhat. Somewhat. Mm -hmm. We let them feel like <laughs> they were involved. <laughs> um, they was involved in the selection as much as we knew. Um, you know, we would say, hey, you know, we'd show pictures. Hey, what do you think of this child or whatever? And the interesting thing was we we did a, our timeline was compressed. And at some point, maybe next month or something like that, we'll get into the actual timeline of how this happened and why it was so compressed. Mm -hmm. But we did a Zoom meeting with her. And then our second meeting was a face-to-face -face meeting. Yeah, you're moving a little fast. I know, I know, but... Okay. but um, but making sure your children are prepared for this and prepared for what's going to come um, is essential. What are some conversations we had with our children? So even prior to us even going through the process, we said, OK, um, we're, you know, remember, we were like, OK, so remember years ago we mentioned we want to adopt a child. So now that time has come. We're settled now because we've led a military life where we moved around a lot. So we're settled now. Now's the time to do it. Um, what do you guys think? And they said, cool. You know, of course they had their, my youngest son, his reasons were a little bit different than my older son, but the overall answer was, yes, we, we want to help out another child and why not? Yeah. So, yeah, so lots of conversations about even preparing them as far as from the trauma perspective of what to expect when it comes down to things like even grooming, what that looks like. Every single detailed conversation you could think of, we prepared our sons for. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, our, even today, our sons don't know what exactly, you know, mm -hmm. things that, you know, our daughter may or may not have gone through. Um, they don't know the specifics. Uh, but it's important to have mature conversations <clears throat> um, at their level yeah. while protecting the privacy of the child that you're bringing into mm -hmm. your home. The third thing I will say would be to minimize expectations. This is not, what's the, uh, Antoine Fisher. This is not, what's the other movie? Instant Family. Instant Family. Yeah. I mean, where this family comes together in 88 minutes. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's beautiful. This is not that. Um, so if you minimize expectations for the child, you will really minimize expectations for yourself. Um, you won't uh, get into certain, you know, be down on yourself when things are not progressing as fast as you would, as you think they should and things like that. And what are your thoughts on, you know, minimizing expectations? Yeah, I agree because um, my husband's more of a realist. I think I'm more of a dreamer. So I'm like this, oh, you know, it's going to be all emotional. We're going to bond. It's going to be so great. I got a little girl. Yeah, no, it didn't happen that way. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, like he said, minimize expectations, but the training does help. It helped me a lot. If you read the books that you're, if you want, you know, whatever company you go through, whatever books they recommend, if you read those things, you go to the trainings and pay attention and all the extra online trainings, they really do prepare you. So when certain things happen, you kind of have this mental note in the back of your mind, like, oh, this is why this is happening. So, yeah. you know, for me, even though I'm a dreamer, um, nothing was really shocking to me. I'm like, okay, so this is what she's experiencing. And I don't know, it's just, the training really does help. So make sure you do that part. Yeah. Other expectations, you know, your expectations that this child is going to be, and we'll get into this as a key point later um, at the end of this video, a key point that, uh, that we have to often remind ourselves. So mm -hmm. expectations for where you think they should be socially or where you think they should be, you know, from a, uh, from a development standpoint, you have to minimize <laughs> your, you know, really minimize your expectations on, you know, some, some ways you're going to find that your child is way ahead. Okay. And some ways you may find 
that your child might not be, you know, um, at the at the quote unquote age that you think they are or they think they should be. Mm-hmm. Take day by day and don't be too hard on yourself. Make sure your highs aren't too high and your lows aren't too low. Number four, this is challenging. You know, you're 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 parenting someone that you did not directly birth. It's going to be emotional for you, but it's also going to take some wisdom and some skill. I often say that parenting is very much a skill. Um, if you you can love someone very much and be a terrible parent um, because parenting is a skill, but it's a skill that you can learn. There are books, there 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 are conversations, there are support groups. We'll get into that later on. There are support groups where you can learn different skills as a parent to be better. Um, but this is going to challenge you. Um, this is going to challenge you because of the unknown. Um, you know, basically, if I take if you take one of my uh, my not, I have a 23 year old son. I generally know the things that he has, you know, cha- struggled with and been challenged with in his life because I was there the whole time. With someone who you're bringing in, you don't know. Of, of course, if you go back to our previous video, we, t- we talked about, you know, you get this, you know, all of these pages of stuff, of things I've been through. But seeing that life through their eyes is not, you know, really what um, what you've been there for, and you haven't witnessed it. So it's challenging from the part of trying to connect with a child. Mm -hmm. Um, It's also hard uh, and it's challenging for a marriage. Mm -hmm. It's you see parenting differently um, and it's going to come up, especially if you're bringing somebody in from the outside. You know, I'll tell you that in our situation, we brought in a little girl um, and I will tell you in two months, I am I am in full girl dad mode. Uh, so I'm like, I am very protective over, uh, my daughter. Um, you know, that's a different dynamic and something Cheryl has an experience from my other three boys. I mean, I was like, they're boys, throw them out there, you know, they'll figure it out. <laughs> it's like, whatever, they're kids, uh, let them do whatever they want. Uh, they'll fall down, get up. Not true. <laughs> um, but I mean, What advice can you give from the perspective of that? Hey, this is hard. Yeah, I would say it's hard from the sense of you're used to disciplining your children a certain way as far as the conversations. They know what our expectations are, you know, and what the punishments are, stuff like that. When you have someone else coming in, um, just who's because keep in mind, we have a 14. She's 15 now. So she's essentially been, I would like to say, not parented. So pretty much free. So just a lot of reversing things and, you know, and maybe getting away with a few more things that our natural children wouldn't get away with. So that part has been a little bit difficult in the household, but we're kind of norming through that part now. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess I guess preparing going back to number two, preparing your children, I think it's essential that they know, hey, you know, there might be some things that this person says um, now, this hasn't happened for us, uh, but when we were in training, mm-hmm. the guy was talking about him adopting his son, and they went, uh, after oh, yeah. they picked up the kid, they went to the restaurant. The the uh, <laughs> the kid sits down, and they say, hey, we'll let you order for yourself or, you know, from the menu, and the kid said something like, uh, I'll have the MF and, you know, <laughs> yeah. the MF and French fries. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, if that's the way you normally talk. In a certain environment, it's not a big deal. Um, and so, you know, just expect it to be difficult and challenging because you're learning someone else and they're also learning you. The next one is preparing for emotional roller coasters. Mm-hmm. It's ups and downs. Yeah, ups and downs. Like, um, I would say for me, an example, I guess, like within the first two weeks or so, um, <laughs> You know, so each week was like a progress. I'll say each day actually was like some progress mm-hmm. good in a good thing, in a good way. But um, just some things like sitting down at dinner <clears throat> and everybody's sitting down talking, having a good time. And then you're thinking, oh, everything's going great. And then all of a sudden, okay, I'm going to my room now. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it's first like, oh, that's how I literally <laughs> felt. So emotional ups and downs with that kind of stuff, because you think, okay, we're making progress, but no, we're not there yet. So. But in those times, we did make progress. We, right. we actually did make progress yeah. in those days because, you know, understand that you're you're 
you're doing something from your point of view, Mm -hmm. but they're also doing things from their point of view and them not being used to certain things. You know, if you're not used to the fact that every day, you know, you sit down for family dinner, no matter what's going on, even if we order out, we sit down for family dinner um, at the table because it's less about the food and more about the conversation. I guess that goes back to don't let your highs be so high and your lows be so low. Uh, because there are a bunch of emotional, you know, roller coasters, and you think you tend to take things out on yourself and think that you know you're not making progress, but you really are uh, making progress, even when you feel like you're not. The next one is being prepared to spend money. You're going to spend some money, okay? Bringing someone into your home. Often, you know, if you're bringing someone in, then they may not have clothes to do the things that you particularly do, Mm -hmm. Um, or um, especially if they've been in this environment. And, you know, understand that, you know, if if you're adopting someone, that's a permanent thing. It's very likely that they're foster parents. And I forgive me if you're somebody that's a foster parent and you don't feel this way. It's just been our experience. Usually or sometimes when people are in foster care, the foster parents may be like, well, I just have to get them to this point or they're going to be gone in two or three months or it's kind of just a stop in. Mm -hmm. So you're not taking the time to ingrain your uh, beliefs and ingrain instruction in them. Honestly, in my opinion, the investment is not as great. Okay. Mm -hmm. Adoption, we're all in, you know, do seven off suit. We're all in, you know, we're pushing all in no matter how bad the hand is um, because that's our child. So in a foster situation, when they've been through many foster situations, there might not have been as great of an investment and you're not viewing things as permanent. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when our daughter came, um, you know, we spent some money, had to go shopping and she was a freaking teenager. So you know, she loved it and everything. And we just had to get, you know, her wardrobe up, getting her enrolled in school and certain things. There was a lot to, you know, spend money on. Mm-hmm. Um, so have some savings because you're going to fork out some cash. Any other ways we, you know, forked out cash? Oh, food. You're going to spend more on food. Yeah, especially if their eating habits are different mm-hmm. than, yeah, than the rest of the families yeah which hers is yeah so but that's it yeah i mean it's the normal stuff but definitely have savings because yeah we had to get shoes you know just a lot of stuff and then we're in private school as well so that's a whole different story but just have a little bit of savings Mm -hmm. and be prepared for that you will get compensated eventually for it but in the meantime just make sure you're prepared eventually we're yeah we have not been compensated for it Uh, so i mean we're Two and a half months in, which is fine. Uh, it's not, that's not what it's about. Uh, but, you know, there was something else. Another thought I had about, you know, things we spent money on. I guess just the experiences. You, but that's, you know. Yeah. Even from the standpoint of, you know, preparing their room to be, yeah. you know, just a safe space for them and the decorations and everything. These are just in the comfort, you know. Um, uh, Cheryl brought Cheryl bought uh, a daughter this this blanket. It's a pink blanket, probably the most comfortable blanket <laughs> in the history of ever. Um, but she's you know when she's around the house, she just walks around with this blanket on it because it's just so comforting. Mm-hmm. Um, so just the little things that you think of, um, you know, just prepare be prepared to you know you're gonna you're gonna fork out some cash. So uh, that's just the way it is. Next thing, um, honey, what's the uh, what's the next thing? Uh, be prepared to parent two children in one body. Mm, okay. That's good. So essentially we have a 14 year old that just turned 15. Mm-hmm. Um, however, we're taught um, in training that whatever age the trauma happened is kind of where they're trapped or where they're stuck. So in some ways she's very mature, um, very smart, but in some ways they're still very childlike behaviors. Mm-hmm. Um, some examples um, include the food and the eating. Definitely more five-year-old type behavior. The responses to um, like anger and frustrations and being confronted. Um, definitely more five-year-old. Definitely shutdown happened there. So, um, but in other ways, very mature. Um, 
So just be prepared for that. And you have to parent them through that trauma. So you have to be patient and not say in your head, oh my gosh, I mean, she's 14. Like, why is she acting like that? She should know better. Um, but you have to be patient and you have to parent them through those stages so that you can prepare them for adulthood and for life. Yeah, that's uh, that's really, really good. Um, you know, some of these things, and I'll, tell you, I'll say this on camera, um, it's some of these things are hard to talk about because we love our daughter. Um, and none of this is her fault. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, it's just the, the hand that she's been dealt and none of this is wrong with her. Okay. Um, any more than it is wrong with someone. I mean, I was, I mean, there are many people who are not taught home training, you know, yeah. um, you know, they go to someone's house to eat and they eat the last of everything mm-hmm. because no one ever taught them like, mm-hmm. Hey, you don't, you don't overstack your plate. When you go for the first round and you're at the barbecue, you get a little bit of everything yeah. and don't take all the freaking food. Um, so, you know, there's certain little things like that. Um, but, you know, back to our point here, talking about parenting two children or two people in one body, there are going to be some uh, responses that they have that are that are childlike. Mm-hmm. Don't attach any expectation to their age. Right. Um, that will set you and them up for failure, mm-hmm. which is going to lead us to our next point, which is if you did not teach them, assume that they do not know. Okay. Um, so babe, what are your, what are your thoughts on that? Cause it's something we have to remind ourselves about all yeah. the time. Yeah. So yeah, don't assume because you know, someone is a teenager or whatever that they know. So if you didn't teach them, assume they don't know, like he said. And this is from things such as bathing, um, washing your hair, brushing your teeth, cleaning your room or bathroom. It doesn't matter. Even a teenager who's maybe started their menstrual cycle. Like, do you know how to use those items properly? So anything um, and everything, just always ask Mm -hmm. and assist. Mm -hmm. Now, and this could be, you know, uh, doing chores or the way they do chores or the way they sweep the floor uh, or, you know, certain things. Now, we're not saying our daughter struggles with this at at all because, you know, if anything, she struggles with taking too many showers. (laughs) So, I mean, my water bill is crazy. Um, But, you know, um, you know, there are certain things that you may adopt a child. And this is things that we learned in training. Um, you know, you may adopt a child and you may think that child knows this because th- they are this age. That's not true. If you didn't teach them, assume they don't know because there are so many other things that they were not, they may have not been exposed to. Um, you know, from cleaning up the trash, throwing things away, just basic things up to more complex things. You can't say that somebody's in, you know, even if they go to school and, you know, they're in, uh, they're learning certain things in school, uh, just certain things as simple things as synonyms and antonyms and stuff like that and similes and everything. You can't assume that, you know, they know that stuff because because keep in mind, um, you know, you were not there. So it's not their fault that they don't know certain things. It's maybe because they just not, they just did not get, you know, that exposure. So we have to remind ourselves all the time when somebody does something, you know, um, you know, I can get frustrated or I can say, wait a minute, I did not teach them that. Mm -hmm. So if I didn't teach them, I can't expect them to know certain things. Um, because you're, you're keep in mind, you're bringing somebody into your family and you don't know what their background is. It's not their fault. They don't, they don't know unless you teach them, uh, first. Yeah. And these are things too, as simple as manners, like just simple manners, like please, thank you, and yeah, yeah. and just respecting adults, just a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. Just assume if you didn't teach it, they don't know it. Yeah, um, and that's not to say that our child struggles with any of that stuff, um, but these are just some things you have to consider. I will say that our child does struggle with some things, just as all kids struggle with mm-hmm. some things, but you can't hold them accountable unless you tell them first um, what they should be doing, okay? Mm -hmm. Last point that we'll bring up is you are going to need a community of people around you in order to do this. You cannot do this alone, okay? Um, Well, I won't say what you can't do. 
it becomes a lot, (laughs) not advised. And it's a lot easier if you have a army of people or people that support you. Fortunately, we've had great people that have stepped up to Mm -hmm. support us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So talk about some of the people that we, you know, engage when we were, you know, um, going through this process or thinking about this process. Oh, well, we had your mom. Mm -hmm. Um, so we're here mainly with uh, Matrix family. So pretty much all of their family, which is a lot of them, it's like 14 people. <laughs> so all of them and even within the Gladney organization, we have support groups, adoption support groups. Well, now we're in the adoption support group. But before we were in the um, parents seeking to adopt. So we talk about, you know, things we're going through, questions we may have, um, offering advice, people offering us advice. So it's been very helpful to have those groups as well. So just be sure to join those organizations and reach out to people, exchange numbers to people with people in your class as well. So yeah, that really helps. Yeah. Um, even. Oh, sorry. Oh, and even in your neighborhood, um, like just let your neighbors inform your neighbors that you're adopting. So if you have a very extreme case um, of a child, say who may have problems with running away, you know, let them know. So they know what your child looks like and they can be on the lookout and help you out. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, even the school that our kids go to, mm-hmm. um, we engaged them early on. Said, "Hey, you know, we're thinking about you know doing this. Um, how do we how do we do this process?" Um, and you know, we had very in depth you know conversations and meetings before uh, before she even came. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, because we wanted her to go to the same school as our um, as our children. They do go to a private school, um, and so we had lots of conversations with them. And they have gone above and beyond to ensure the transition, you mm-hmm. know, even to the point of like call and send us an email or send us a text during the day. Oh, yeah. Hey, you know, this is going on. <clears throat> um, you know, uh, might want to have a conversation about this. It has been fantastic. And I will tell you that if we did not have those people in our corner, this would have been a lot more uh, difficult. But you got to reach out and engage those people and don't expect to do this on your own. One very important thing is to set expectations or boundaries, your rules, your family standards, whatever you want to call them from the beginning Mm -hmm. and do not venture away from those things that you set. Yeah. Because as soon as they see like a softness or a little area to kind of get in there, they're going to take advantage of it. So be very, very, very firm with the decisions that you guys make as couples and the standards that you set in your, um, in your household. Yeah. One of our standards is, I mean, and, and you're going to have to hold people accountable, even when it's very difficult. Mm-hmm. I don't like punishing anybody, uh, but there's a standard and, you know, uh, people have to be held to the standard. I only share this because I think even if our daughter saw this, she'd be OK with me sharing it. Our daughter decided one day that she was going to um, sleep through family Bible study. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Not something you do. Mm-hmm. And um mm-hmm. That did not end well. Um, so, you know, she got punished um, for for that. But she learned, like, hey, you know, you get your butt up out of the bed for family Bible study uh, on Tuesday and Thursday morning. So, um, but that's the Some same punishment, by the way, like a restrictive thing. Not like yeah, I've never, I've like, never hit my yeah. <laughs> Um So yeah, so she got her phone taken away for a period of time. Um, <laughs> interestingly enough, my other son showed up late, so he got his phone taken away too. Uh, seven forty-five, seven forty-five. Uh, happy butt at tape. Um, so, you know, it's, it, you have to have standards and don't deviate from your standards because, uh, you know, at the end of the day, a child is a child. Uh, yeah. these little terrorists will, you know, can terrorize I say? you. <laughs> they will terrorize you if you let them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, But again, so um, just like in the last video, I am going to uh, put Cheryl's email on this video. You can email her and ask any questions that you need to ask about, um, you know, adoption or the process or anything like that or things we're experiencing. Understand we're doing this. We're doing these videos and we're what two and a half months in. Mm -hmm. Um, There are so many other topics we can, you know, cover on this. I think we might do one in like a week or two, uh, just covering some of the conversations that we've had to have, Mm -hmm. um, just, you know, bringing someone in and instilling certain things in them like uh, worth Mm -hmm. um, and value Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, certain things that teenagers struggle with. 
Um, you know, we have had very clear conversations because you're, you, you know, when you bring somebody in and they're like 13, 14 years old, you got about, you know, four or five years mm -hmm. to, you know, hopefully, um, you know, ingrain things in them uh, that might have not been ingrained in the first 13 years of their lives. But mm -hmm. hey, thanks for doing this, honey. Really appreciate it. Thanks for being on camera. You're so pretty mm -hmm. and you often don't get on camera with me. You're welcome, honey. Anytime. <laughs> All right. See you guys next time on Major Money Matters.